Hey, everybody. Welcome to Thursday night. And this is H.A. Brock live, late night mayhem. And the topic tonight is sex, health, and rock and roll. Just being a little bit more uh, politically correct in, in regards to that. So I'm not really into illicit drugs, but uh, that's okay. But illicit sex is good. Oh, well, you know, as long as it's legal. Okay. <laughs> As long as it's legal. So, Consent's important. Yeah, of course. Uh, so uh, tonight, uh, we got a couple of people that are coming on. Uh, the first guest to um, my right uh, is uh, Sheldon Zanber or Sheldon Z, the man, the myth, the legend. So uh, say hi to the people and, uh, and tell, tell them a little bit about you. I'm a keyboard player. I live in Calgary. And I just play everything, everyone. Uh, I do film soundtrack music. I compose. I just did uh, an album's worth of music at a live concert last week. Um, I do music directing at an art school. Uh, vocal coach. Mm, play for dance companies. Uh, all kinds of different things. I, I mean, you got to do everything if you're going to stay, stay out of the office. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's the goal. Stay out of an office building. Stay out of an office building. Okay. Stay out of an office building. Well, th that's okay. So um, uh, tonight with tonight's theme, I'm, I'm going to ask you a few questions and you okay. can bring up your own questions if you want or, or comment, sure. you know, whatever. So um, I'm going to be a little, a little, you know, philosophical. So what okay. is your life philosophy? What is what is your life philosophy? Give me give me your, like your little Reader's Digest, you know, two cents about who Sheldon Zambar is and what his you know uh, approach to life is. Oh boy, there's a question. Um, okay, what my philosophy for life? Basically, is to stay true to yourself, play your music as much as you can, and and don't let people affect who who you are as a musician. Just play who you are because you're going to butt up against a lot of people that, that want to go, hey, you know, you shouldn't play like that and whatnot. And um, let's see. Just uh, don't let the small shit bug you. Like there's a lot of small stuff out there and it, it starts to gnaw at you and it starts to like rip pieces out of you and, and it's just to let it, let it go. So all well, these yeah. things are all these things are processes that happen over time, but this is the latest thing. It's like just staying positive now, you know. Oh, uh, we've had we've had a, a couple of discussions in regards to the the, the concept of uh, gratitude and thankfulness, mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know, just be thankful and grateful, uh, um, you know, on the daily basis for the things that that happen to you, and then share that because you know. That energy of uh, of sharing, you know, that that whole you know reciprocation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and karma, um, you know, go, goes a long way. So, uh, mm -hmm. who are, who are you grateful and thankful for in regards to where you are today? Do you have you had any um, any mentors or people that have guided you uh, through the path to you know come to be? The Sheldon that people know and love today. Uh, you know what? I've I've had mentors when I was really really young, and I've had actually not so much mentors, but really good friends that were kind of on the same plane as me, and we just basically kind of supported each other, and we we talked to, to each other about stuff. And it's really about friends that are honest enough that aren't afraid to go, "Hey, you know what, dude? You gotta, you know, you you gotta buck up, or you know, you gotta do something." And people that are really on your side no matter what if you're wrong you're wrong but they're always going to be there for you so I didn't have anyone per se I mean I started off with my dad and my dad was really what started who started me on music so but he started me up and he he almost went to the point of grinding me down so it wasn't until I started hanging out with other friends that played music and then I went okay cool this is what it's supposed to be about yeah so what, um, just to reiterate, what, what um, instrument do you play? Or what play keyboards, piano, yep. keyboards, yep. All, all keyboards. Yeah. And, and, uh, Except accordion. And how long have you been doing that for? Since I was four. Oh, cool. 
Nifty. Yeah. So uh, I see Billy has a question. What have you been, what has been your biggest barriers or mental obstacles have you had to overcome as musicians uh, to do what is true to you? Uh, people's opinions, listening to other people, listening to other people that really don't care or, you know what, there's always going to be people that you're going to piss off. And that's just one of the things you've got to remember. And it, it's not even in music, it's in everything. So there's always going to be someone you're going to be uh, making unhappy. And you know what, I've come to realize that, you know what, if you're not making some people unhappy, like other people that are, they have opinions, you're doing it wrong. So I take it as a compliment now. When someone describes something to me that I'm doing wrong or whatever, I'm at a point where I go, you know what, thanks. I think that's pretty cool. You know, I, uh, I'm, i yeah, I, it's good. Cool. Um, what, um, what or who influenced you growing up? Um, I'll give you a couple of examples, like musically, culturally, film, you know. Was there a, a particular person that you idolized when you were, when you were, uh, when you were young that uh, you wanted to fashion yourself off of? Uh, was there a cultural movement or a cultural kind of like, you know, idea that that you adhere to or wanted to, you know, uh, you know, rise to or, you know, along well, that lines? You know, when I was growing up and I was starting to really get into music, I really wanted to. I really wanted to be in something like Zeppelin. I really mm -hmm. loved rock, loved mm -hmm. rock. And then I started hanging around musicians and I was hanging around a musician that was really into the LA scene. And he was, and he got me into checking out musicians as opposed to bands. So I would buy records that were, that featured musicians. And then I thought this is something I could do because I didn't have to rely on getting a band together or whatever. And I mm -hmm. could just work on myself and then get into the studios and start, uh, you know, start honing my craft in a studio. And so that's what I was gearing myself to. And in fact, I got a big shout out to, uh, it was a Carl Lambert. He was, there was a record store that was called Kelly's in Calgary mm -hmm. at one time. And this guy would crack open records, vinyl, and he would suss out like stuff that he would put aside for me. And every week I would go in and he would have a wicked record for me to pick up mm -hmm. and I would just bite it by it, uh, by its sight unseen. Mm -hmm. And I had the most insane record collection because of this dude. Cause he was like the hippest cat at the time. Mm -hmm. He was amazing. So he yeah. was a mentor. He was an educator to you. Uh, yeah. You know, he, things. Yeah. He just wanted to lay stuff on me and he was just like, he wanted to blow my brains out and, and he did every week. I just got some crazy albums from mm -hmm. this guy. And uh, I just connected with him like a last year. And I said, dude, you have no idea what you got in. You know, thanks. Uh, any specific uh, names or, or albums that uh, come yeah. to mind? Yeah. Art Farmer Crawl Space. Mm -hmm. That was epic. That mm -hmm. one, that one did me in. Yeah. It had Steve Gadd, had Art Farmer. It had... Um, uh, it had, I think, Dave Grusin on piano, which is kind of bizarre, but it was cool. It, it grew like a son of a bitch. Uh, bass player was Will Lee from the from uh, Letterman Show. It was a crazy album. Just the deepest groove. Four tracks, two tracks per side. It was amazing. Well, and another one was Hubert Laws live in San Francisco. And the band was just crazy. The, the way they opened up, and they opened up a funk. Mm -hmm. and and they jammed it was great it, that did me yep uh any uh any films or 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 specific people that uh, you you loved when you were younger that uh, kind of influenced you uh, mm. for me um film and music and dance all kind of you know goes hand in hand with me you can't sure. you can't really have one without the other <laughs> yeah. They're all they're all pretty they're all pretty. Uh, I grew up on um, kind of like musicals, uh, yeah. and so you know, thirties, forties musicals, and then uh, and then working into like the sixties and seventies. So I was a very odd kid. I I um, just you know yeah. ate those up. I, I digested those like they were 
you know, snacks. And right. when uh, the average kid, you know, knew like baseball scores and, and all that kind of stuff, I could tell you directors mm -hmm. and, you know, and dancers mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what's cool right now is that that diversification right now is actually cool now in schools. Like, there's so many subsects in school <laughs> that kids who get into that or get into goth or get into uh, whatever metal. There's like everybody is cool. You're allowed to branch out. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I was growing up, and sounds like when you were, you were kind of the oddballs, mm -hmm. even though even though I was into zeppelin i mean really <laughs> that's pretty mainstream back then but well i, I was into i grew up with jazz r&b yeah. uh soul um yeah. you know i i i was a huge kiss fan when i was a young person oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I i was obsessed um, my brother and i we used to dress up like them like all the nice. time <laughs> all the time I, you know what I, I saw them in oakland we were, we were visiting friends in San Leandro and they had an extra ticket because his sister was sick. So he said, hey, you want to go see Kiss? And I went, I don't know what that is. And then next thing I know, I'm I'm in Oakland Stadium in an American stadium, which they really get into their, their yeah. stadium music, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And then there's Kiss. It was it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I... I, I um... I used to, you know, listen to all their stuff. I had their albums, used to dress like them, yeah. used to watch the movies, used to yeah. do... Watch what was your favorite? Movies. Oh, my favorite was um, Peter Chris, but I, I looked more like Paul Stanley because I had the big hair and the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I still think that my, my favorite song overall from Kiss, although it was specific... Yeah. Solo from uh, yeah from um, uh, Peter Chris was Beth all time. Sorry, really, I, no. I love I, I love that song. <laughs> I just I love that song. Can't help it. Um, it's okay. Uh, yeah, and then um, you know, then their their hits. You know, yeah, you know, I was made for loving you and all those other ones. You know, I I want to rock and roll all night. Yeah, you know, all those. Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh no, I had the Kiss Alive <laughs> album that was on my record player for a while there. Mm -hmm. Kiss Alive. There was there was good tunes. They're kind of they're kind of meatball tunes, but you know what? They were catchy. They were good. Yeah, fun. And you good, know, good today, fun tunes. Come on, Gene Simmons is a friggin' genius. He's a he's a yeah. marketing genius. Great businessman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's probably one of the most successful. One actually is the most successful one out of Kiss. Yeah. And today, you know, he's worth like millions and. Millions and millions, Hundreds of millions of those, of yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So he, hey. he is a branding, marketing, you know, genius, that guy. He's no uh, dummy. No, he's not. He's not a dummy at all. Hey, he married a Canadian girl. Come on. He, he's not that dumb. <laughs> but yeah, good looking girls here. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, his kids, his kids mm -hmm. are pretty smart and pretty yeah. talented themselves. So, Smart enough to get in a Star Wars movie? That's pretty good. <laughs> I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's too bad. That's but, a good that's a good deal. That's a good deal. But um, what what uh, um, we're in 2016, and the majority yep. of people are are using computers and digital tools and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, tell me a little bit about your experience or the things that you might. Um, use on a daily basis in regards to your your music practice like digital tools programs apps uh what 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 kind of things do you guys you know play with on a regular basis well i'm doing uh well just last week i've been writing out some charts on a program called sibelius mm -hmm. it's a pretty uh it's a pretty good uh program for writing out music mm -hmm. um it's the easiest one of all the major uh the writing programs to learn and I can whip up a chart, you know, and it's uh, in a couple hours. So that's like band with horns. And it's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So when uh, the uh, the goddess of the band requests that I write a chart, I can get her one within like two hours and have it mailed all the parts to her. And then she can, she can email them out to the rest of the guys in the band. Uh, and for me, I, I can put them all on Dropbox and then... Um, 
and everybody throws these charts on their uh, iPads because nobody's using paper on the mm-hmm. on the gig, yeah. which is cool. And then I use Logic, Logic f- with my Mac. It's it's pretty streamlined. It's a great program, easy to understand. Um, just throwing down tracks. Uh, I got a friend that's uh, just did a commercial for Budweiser. Um, is that Dowie? Yeah, Dowie. Just did yeah. the Budweiser commercial, and I was helping him with tracks um, before I left for the Caribbean. So I'm putting tracks together on spec, hoping that they're going to fit uh, before I leave. And uh, yeah, and then it was aired at the Super Bowl. So that's kind of sweet. Yeah, it is pretty sweet. So I'm kind of the the crack, you know, like the the crackpot that just comes in and just throws in tracks really quickly for him while he's uh, bogging down. Mm-hmm. And um, Friday night at midnight, I'm putting down a track uh, for uh, for Morag. Uh, she did a benefit up in Edmonton. Yeah, yeah. For Michael Green, mm-hmm. and so we're recording at midnight. Uh, Thursday, I was mastering with a mastering suite at my com- on my computer, mm-hmm. and that was for uh, a video for for Johanna. Mm-hmm. So she got video footage of our New Year's gig, and then she wanted it kind of beefed up, and so I did. So you know, like it's constant. Like you're using your tools. You might not use them every day, but mm-hmm. you're using them constantly. Mm-hmm. You know, you're using like four or five computer uh, you're like programs constantly. And you're just switching back and forth. So you were uh, talking about um, Mixler uh, a little while ago. So yeah. um, give me, give me, give me the four one one of that. Well, Mixler was pretty cool because it was the only program I found that was reliable enough. And it's kind of the same as this. It would. Uh, I was doing a gig with uh, Simon Fisk. And Robin Tufts, and we would have two hours um, on at the rush hour, and we would play happy hour, and we would play jazz, just straight ahead jazz, at the Hyatt. And the thing was, it we found that people in the lounge there were kind of like they didn't care if we were there or not. So I thought, well, if nobody cares, then I'm going to find an audience that does care. So Mixler uh, allowed us to. Um, was it broadcast live mm-hmm. and uh, just like a radio station and people could listen on the computers. And the great thing about it, it was just like this program. Uh, it would record the program and then we could um, go through it and see what we liked and, and save the tracks uh, onto SoundCloud almost automatically. So it was good. I know it's, uh, um, you know, the tools these days are pretty amazing for what they can do. Yeah. If you know uh, what you want to do with them, um, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, yeah, yeah, like this, it saves, it, it emails you, you get a video file, you get an audio file, so you yeah. can can just you know send it right to YouTube or to wherever you want to, or you could take it off, edit it, make it a little bit more pretty, and then package mm-hmm. it, and then <laughs> repurpose it for another for another platform, which is yeah. um, just amazing i can't believe uh, it so this is cool this is cool for me too yeah. i'm learning about it so yeah i think this is going to move forward and be a, a really good uh, useful tool for a lot of people mm-hmm. and once people start to figure out uh, the many ways that they can that's going to be fun oh yeah uh, i i'm looking forward to doing some more fictional stuff i'm in the process with a, a couple mm-hmm. of buds and we're going to do some fictional things, maybe radio plays or, or some kind of, kind of, uh, something along that line. Yeah. But with, uh, with a video component, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but yeah, it should be, should be interesting. Should be interesting. Should be cool. Yeah. And it's, since it's still in beta, who knows what's, what the next little incarnation is going to be in the tools mm-hmm. uh, are, that they're going to have. Um, just speaking just for sentimental point of view, if we're talking yeah. digital tools and online communities and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, what was your first uh, online community? Like, you know, chat rooms, uh, social media platforms, uh, any of that, if you want to go <laughs> completely old school on us. I think it was like news groups on <laughs> email. Yeah, there you go. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, I, I joined some kind of news group on uh, on Microsoft email. Oh God, yeah, yep. And back then, in the mm-hmm. mm, yeah, that was back in the like nineteen ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah, yeah. Back in the free net days. Yeah. Back in the dial up fourteen four, baby. <laughs> back in the wild west. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that's that's pretty funny. Yeah, I I was similar, uh, and then you know, when they actually, uh, you know, got to a point where they had graphic inter interfaces and all that kind of stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, the the Mozillas and the uh, mm-hmm. those things back in the day. Yeah, we were, America Online. Oh my God, where things were so slow and everything was text based, and there was yeah. no such thing as as video then. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, pictures was just starting to be kind of like all the rage. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember some uh, kind of like online webs, web episodes uh, back then that were like kind of sort of soap operas, mm-hmm. but they were done texts and pictures. Mm-hmm. We Village was one. It was back in like oh, yeah. 1995 or 96 yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. Very, very interesting. I uh, did a flash cartoon. Oh yeah, flash back, cartoons back in two thousand two. Yeah, 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 and that was so, pretty cool. Um, there was what was that? That there was one with um, Kelsey Grammer. It was something, something that George the Rat or Henry the Rat or whatever, where he was a um, a lawyer. It was mm-hmm. brilliant, brilliant little short um, episodes, and it was all flash. Uh, I loved it. It was awesome. Uh, cool. Very funny, very very funny. But uh, so. Um, I hear through the grapevine that uh, you've got a, a bit of uh, a, a, a social and musical emergency with uh, a dear friend. Yeah. So if, if you if you need to cut this short and um, go head yeah. off to her, uh, I'm I'm more than cool with that, and I know her personally also. So yeah, yeah. Go, you know go what help, I mean. <laughs> go go help her out, and that's yeah. uh, that that's uh, fantastic. But so. Thank you for coming on uh, yep. for this test episode. Um, and uh, next time we'll, we'll get a couple more people on here and we'll actually have a, a well-rounded conversation, but it was good for you to, uh, to, to step on out and thanks yep. very much for showing up. And where thanks, can sir. people, where can people find you? Um, uh, do you have well, like, I got a website, sheldonzanboard.com mm-hmm. uh-huh. and I've just, uh, I've been slacking off. I haven't been posting all my gigs, so I'm posting all my, my public gigs. I've just had a slew of them last month mm-hmm. and uh, I got a few in March. So mm-hmm. I post them and uh, I post some on Facebook, but it's, you know, like for Facebook, it's all the people that I know anyways. And they, mm-hmm. they don't come to my gigs anyways, cause they know me <laughs> <laughs> so, and I don't go to their gigs cause I know them. So, yeah, yeah. but the public, uh, yeah, it's, it's my name and dot com. Yeah. Well, well there you go. Yeah. Um, anything special coming up in the in the, the next day or two? Uh, not the next day or two, but I tell you, on the eleventh, I'm doing a uh, a uh, was it uh, a world music uh, gig with mm-hmm. uh, a sitar player and uh, Tim Williams and um, oh, that should be interesting. Yeah, and John Mc, uh, not McIsaac. I can't remember his last name anyways. Jazz drummer. Anyways, yeah. it's a whole whole slew of different types of musicians, and we're doing a world uh, music thing uh, special for the Junos. And then on the 15th at the Ironwood, I'm playing with uh, Tim Tamashiro, and we're doing like a variety show. So yeah. that should be a lot of fun. Well, so good. Go. Well, thanks, uh, Sheldon. Uh, we'll Come see back. you again another, another time. Come on back. Yeah. Well, do. And, uh, well, you have a good night, and give my best to Johanna. Will do. Okay. okay. Have a good night. Peace, brother. Good night. Peace. So, uh,